around my story. I usually host a slumber party once a month, so my girlfriends already know the drill. They bring their jammies, blankets, nail polish, hair products, lots of snacks, candies, and chocolates, but this time, Lucy brought wine. She had to sneak the wine in my house because my mom is kind of strict when it comes to drinking. My dad is almost never home. My mom sleeps really early, so we kinda had the house all to ourselves. We put on onesies, random dresses, and some costumes. My favorite is the Cinderella dress, and I still like wearing it even if I'm 17 now. We're all 17. I have three best friends, Lucy, Ashley, and Sheila. We have lots of fun and lots of secrets together. Sometimes I wish time would stop so we can always have each other. I know time will come that I will be separated from them. College will happen, and we'll have different lives in different circles. At least for now, we can be silly high school kids. We have an ideal high school life. We all have boyfriends, but mine is the most popular one. Well, I'm pretty popular at my school too. I also do well with academics. None of my friends are failing or anything. We're not the typical popular cheerleaders with no brains type. We do not have family drama. Our social life is great. We have the best high school life ever. While dancing and partying all night, Lucy came up with an idea. She said, let's play truth or dare. We got giddy because we know the night is going to get crazy. We sat down forming a circle, then Lucy spun the bottle, and the bottle chose me. Truth or dare? Truth. Not in the mood for a dare yet, I said. Pick a question. They prepared some questions on a piece of paper and put them inside a fishbowl. If you could choose to be someone else for tonight, who would you choose and why? Lucy asked. I just laughed and said, What a lame question. I don't want to be anybody else. I'm awesome. I have an awesome life. Cheers to that, they said. The night passed and I woke up in the middle of the night because I felt like someone was watching me. But when I woke up, no one was around. I don't know how, but my feet just started moving. I walked like I was trying to follow something or someone. My gut feelings are trying to bring me somewhere. Then in the middle of the darkness in our backyard, I swear I heard footsteps. I felt a sting on my left shoulder. Something poked my shoulder. I removed it. I guess it's a tranquilizer? And then I passed out. From here on, listen carefully because I guarantee you're going to love this story. It's like a movie, and I cannot believe that this thick plot is actually my life. I tried putting together the stories that happened while I was gone, and someone else was being me. I know it sounds complicated, but before I proceed, do not forget to subscribe and hit the bell button for notifications. So here it goes. Someone tranquilized me, and I instantly fell asleep. By the way, my name is Nancy. You have met my friends, and I'm sure you'd like to know who drugged me and what the motive is. Meet Patricia. At first, I had no idea why she looked exactly like I do. I thought I was dreaming. Before passing out, I asked her who she was. She told me that her name is Nancy. She was obviously messing with me. Then she told me that her name is Patricia, and that she is my twin, and she would love to be Nancy instead. What? I did not believe her, because I don't have a twin sister. My mom and dad would never keep any secrets from me. Or would they? She said that she was kept by our parents in a mental institution a couple of hours away from our town, ever since we were three. I just realized that I have no recollection of any kind of memories when I was only three years old. At first I thought, wow, is this really happening? I just think I watched too much TV. But this is reality. How did it happen? Let me tell you how it happened. Well, at first, she tranquilized me while I was asleep. I think she had other people with her who dragged me into a pickup, covered my mouth, tied me up and blindfolded me. And then they brought me into a dark basement, I think. I'm not sure, because when I woke up, everything was just a blur. I only saw her face. I thought I was looking in the mirror. She told me everything that I needed to know. Well, her version of the story. I was shocked. But I would like to know my mom and dad's version of the story as well. Patricia told me that they got her locked up in a mental institution with special care. 
My mom did not like the idea, but eventually agreed when Patricia looked at her and said, Daddy's next. I got the chills, but she never told me the reason why she ended up in the mental institution. She has been following me ever since we were 14 years old. One of the security staff has got a crush on her, so she's able to go in and out when no one is looking. She wants me dead because she would like to replace me and have my awesome life. She said she would take revenge on mom and dad for depriving her of having a life like I do. It got me worried, but she made me powerless. For the second time, she injected me again, so I passed out. Next thing I remember, I'm in a dark room with just a bed, a pillow, and a blanket. This must be her room. I'm locked inside the mental institution, just like in the movies. She managed to make my friends believe that she is me. She's clever. They went shopping, they partied, and they did not even realize that something was wrong. She must really be pulling it off. Even my parents and my boyfriend are not suspecting a thing. But our prom is almost here. Me and my friends are all excited for it. But I think I have to give up the dream of going since I'm logged up in here. I just miss my friends, I miss my parents, I miss my boyfriend. And I miss my life. It hurts me that I've been missing for a while and they didn't even notice or feel that it's Patricia and not me. She's just a stranger to them. After one week, I made friends with the security staff. They kept on asking why I was so kind and polite to all of them. I tried to tell them the truth, but they just made me drink some medicine because they thought I was hallucinating. Then a surprise happened. My parents visited me? I mean, they visited Patricia? I don't know. When I saw them, I gave them a hug. I miss you. I'm so glad you're okay. Are you guys hurt or anything? My mom answered, Honey, why would we be hurt? I know my mom would believe me. My dad's judgment is not always the best. Mom, this is me, Nancy. She switched us. She tied me up and she hurt me. And then my dad interrupted. Enough, Patricia. Dad, I am Nancy. I said enough. You've pulled this trick before and why on earth do you think this is going to work again? I pleaded so hard but my dad threatened that they would leave if I still insist. So, I just cried. I love my dad, but he's never around, so no wonder we don't have a great relationship. I wonder if he even knows when my birthday is. I mean, our birthday. But then again, I don't want to judge him. I know he's just trying to be tough, but I looked at my mom. I can see in her eyes that she truly feels sorry for me whether she thinks I'm Nancy or Patricia. Honey, I know things haven't been great, but a promise is a promise. A promise? Yes, we will not break our promise, which is when your doctor says you're ready to go, we will bring you back home. I cried and I had a meltdown. I just couldn't help it. Mom, I am Nancy. Please believe me, please. My dad ordered the staff to drag me out of their sight. But when they tried to grab me by my arms, I resisted, so my shirt got torn apart, bearing my shoulders. My parents saw this, and they were shocked. My mom pointed on my left shoulder. Well, I had this weird birthmark on my left shoulder. Maybe they recognized it. My mom looked at my dad and said, She is Nancy. My dad told the staff to leave us alone to talk. He gave me a hug and said, I'm sorry. How did this happen? Why are you here? When did you meet your twin sister? My mom said. I told them how Patricia executed her plan, but I asked them how they knew it was me. They looked at each other. My dad gave my mom a slight nod as if saying it's time to let me know. When you were three, I left you and Patricia upstairs to play. When I got back, I saw you on the floor with a pencil stabbed on your left shoulder. We saw Patricia holding a hammer. And your head was also bleeding, which resulted in loss of your memories. We thought you were dead. My mom did not finish the story. She started crying while leaning on my dad's chest. My dad continued, The doctor said that if we wasted just a couple of seconds more, you might not be with us. And he let out a sigh. I have an uncle with the same situation as Patricia. The genes must have passed on to her. 
I'm sure that there's something wrong with her. So even at a young age, we made a special program for her to be admitted here. We had high hopes that she will become normal. I absentmindedly responded, You recognized me because of the scar on my shoulder? I thought it was just a weird birthmark. What are you gonna do with Patricia now? Mom and Dad went home and proceeded to my room right away. Patricia didn't know that my parents are aware of what happened. They gave her a hug. My parents apologized to her. We are sorry. We love you. And this is the only way we know you would be better. She instantly knew that my parents knew and she ran away. My mother called the police but instructed them to never hurt Patricia. Patricia is a very smart girl. She went to a party with Lucy, Sheila, and my boyfriend. She told them, I have a twin sister and she's trying to kill me. They just all laughed at her. Then I arrived, but instead of making things better, it validated her statement. Oh my goodness, there's two of you? My boyfriend said. I said, guys, it's me, Nancy. Do not believe her, I'm Nancy, she's my evil twin, Patricia said. Come on, this is me, we all grew up together. I said, then I looked at my boyfriend. Babe, you seriously didn't know it wasn't me? Babe, don't listen to her, Patricia said. Can someone prove who the real Nancy is, please? Sheila said. I had no choice but to reveal the secrets we have just to prove that I am the real Nancy. My friends got convinced in no time. They all ran to my side and were afraid of Patricia. Instead of helping, my boyfriend Marco, he ran away. Seriously, I think you should break up with him, Patricia told me. Then to our horror, she pulled out a gun and pointed at us. We all gasped. I enjoyed having your life and I'm trying to make it permanent. Oh, by the way, you got accepted to Harvard, but I think I'll be the one going there instead. She pulled the trigger, but surprisingly, Marco jumped in front of the bullet. Turns out he just left to call the police. He went back because he knows something bad is going to happen. Marco was shot, but we heard the police siren. Patricia fired another shot, but thankfully the police were able to stop her. Now, let's fast forward to the prom day. Two weeks ago when Marco got shot in the shoulder and Patricia was put back in the mental institution with more security this time. Good thing is, mom and dad decided to visit her more often to help her recover. The doctor said she would be better if we always visited her. I enjoyed the prom. We danced all night and I finally shared my first kiss with Marco. But the sad part is, we decided to break up. We are going to different colleges and I know that our relationship should not weigh us down. We could have a lot of opportunities. We made a pact that if ever we finish college after four years and we're still single, then we'll be back together. Before taking off to college, I visited Patricia. I know she hates me, but I told her that I love her and I forgive her. I also made a deal with her that every summer I will visit and make memories with her. I told her that I would like to get to know her. And here I am now. After four years, I graduated at Harvard University. I majored in psychology and I'm doing research now with my colleagues about Patricia's case. As for Marco, well, he's already taken. While I was gone, he took care of Patricia, just like how I always requested during our phone calls. He got to know her and he fell for her, because despite her crazy mind, a good heart is lying within. Weird, I know, but that is how life goes. Besides, Patricia deserves a second chance, just like everyone else.